Hey guys, I'm gonna be showing you how to do a microwave install today. This is a built-in microwave. As you see, there are two different boxes here. The top box has my base and the trim that goes around the microwave. The bottom box is the microwave itself since it's basically a countertop microwave that we're building in. So let's go ahead and open them up and see what's going on. All right, so the first thing that I always do anytime we're doing an install for a built-in microwave, we need to verify that the consumer's dimensions um, that we're going to set the unit into are correct. Before I go through the whole process of unboxing our unit, we need to make sure that our opening is going to be large enough to encase it. So I've got 17 inches on height, which is good. Our width is right at 25 inches that should be good and then our depth is almost two feet so we got plenty on all of them so we're good to go ahead and install this unit as always let's open up the the box for our trim kit you always open the trim kit first because inside of your trim kit is your installation instructions i always like to review these just in case there have been any changes or edits to the process since we've always got new product coming out there may be a different style different type than the last one that i installed so i will review these really quick um, just to make sure there are no changes give me about five minutes and i'll get right back with you guys all right so let's go ahead and unpack our trim kit box so the first thing i'm pulling out here is my actually trim that goes around my microwave. It's got this blue film protective covering on it. I'm gonna set this off to the side for now. All right, so next, I'm gonna remove the bag of hardware. We got a bag full of screws, and then I'm gonna take out these two brackets. Now these go directly to the bottom of the microwave itself. They're affixed to the, the base of it. I'm gonna go ahead and set these off to the side. We can pull our styrofoam out and see what we have hiding underneath here. So, you got a big metal box. I'm assuming this probably goes on the back of the appliance. And here is our base, our base that we're going to use. Go ahead and set this off to the side. So that's everything inside of here. Let's go ahead and get this out of the way. All right, so now that we've got our trim kit unpacked, let's go ahead and unpack our microwave. Now right here on top, I've got my, my turntable ring and my plate. Let's set these off to the side. Go ahead and pull the styrofoam off. See if we can get this beast out of this box. All right, so I'm gonna open my door up. I'm gonna remove anything that is left inside of my microwave because with built-ins, you basically, you have two, those two brackets that mount to the base of this unit. So to be able to mount them to the base, I'm gonna have to flip this thing over and gain access to the bottom of it. There we go. Now let me go get my brackets and we can go ahead and install them. All right, so if you notice, this is the bottom of our microwave. You've got the four feet that the unit actually sits on. Now, on our brackets, they have little round cutouts on both sides. And those cutouts, the feet actually go inside of those cutouts. Plus, you have these little arrows pointing towards the front of the appliance. You want to ensure that when you drop it down on your feet, that your bracket's facing the correct direction. Now both brackets are the exact same, and what it's gonna do is it allows you to line up a screw. You can put two screws in this bracket to actually secure it to the base of this unit. All right, so we're gonna dig into our hardware bag and grab out one of our Phillips head screws. Now on this bracket, our screw hole is here and here. It's gonna be different on the opposite one. They actually have four holes in each bracket to make them reversible, so you can use either bracket on either side. But for this side, we're actually going to put a screw right there, dead center, and then one back here in the back. And let's move over to our other bracket. All right, so on this bracket, our screw hole's here in the front, and then we've got another one back here in the very back. So we're going to dig two more Phillips head screws out of our 
hardware bag. And then this one back here in the back. All right, so now I'm going to flip this thing back over and I'm going to turn it around. There's a bracket that goes on the back of the unit. All right, so some of our units, not all of them, some of them you just put the rails on the base. This one, actually, we're going to add this trim piece to the back. This, this is actually for our duct work. It's going to allow the heat that this thing's expelling to go back up to the front and vent out around where our trim kit is. So to install this piece, the first thing I've got to do is I'm going to undo my power cord tape, set that off to the side. Then I'm going to grab my panel. Now it's got two tabs. So I'm going to grab my panel. It's got two tabs, top and bottom. Those actually lock on to these cutouts on the side of my unit. So we lock them in and fold this entire piece down. And you're gonna notice that there are actually screw holes that line up. I've got two on top, two here, and I believe there's just one more right here, which that one already has a screw in it. So I'm gonna take that out, take that torque screw out and secure it back here on the back as well. All right, so let's go ahead and let's remove this one torque screw down here in the bottom left. I'm going to grab my panel, lock it in, hold it back down, grab one of my Phillips screws from my hardware bag. Another Phillips screw from my hardware bag. This piece basically diverts our, our heat. Since we're encasing this unit, it's going to divert our heat back to the front. Like I was talking about the venting, so it's very crucial that we get this thing installed. And my last Phillips head screw. All right, so now we can move on to our base pan. All right, so to be able to install, so this is, our, this is our base pan that we're going to be setting up here, but we need to get it centered so that whenever we set our trim ring up here, it's going to be centered over the oven that's mounted right below it or centered in the opening, uh, even if you don't have an uh, oven that's down below it. So if you recall, my width was 25 inches. Half of 25 is 12 and a half. So we're going to go 12 and a half. to center, I'm going to put a little pencil mark where my center mark is. And then I can grab my pan and I can go center on my pan. Now there's two arrow marks, two arrow marks here that show you where the center of this pan is. All right, so now that I've got my pan centered, I'm going to take a pencil and I'm going to mark where my four front holes are. Because these, we're going to pre-drill them. You always pre-drill these. I always pre-drill them um, just because I don't want the wood to split or break, um, especially since I can't fix the wood. I'm only here to do the install. There's also one, two, three screw holes inside the cabinetry. So we're going to mark those as well while we're doing this. And I'm going to drill those out as well. Now I'm going to move this out of the way and I'm going to carefully drill out all of my pilot holes. You don't need a lot for these. Keep in mind these are pretty small screws. All right, so whenever I pre-drilled my holes, it left a little bit of sawdust, it left a little debris. So I'm gonna go ahead and clean this up real quick and I'll get right back with you guys. All right, so now that we've got our mess cleaned up, we've got all of our pilot holes drilled out. I'm gonna line my bracket back up with my pre-drilled holes. Now these four in the front 
hold off on putting a screw in there. Those actually secure the unit as well. So right now we only need three screws. So I'm going to go to my hardware bag, get, grab three Phillips head screws, and we're going to run them into the three holes that we placed inside up here on the, the base panel to secure it to the cabinetry. All right, so now that I've got this, uh, my base pan installed, we can go ahead and slide our microwave in. I do want to caution you, make certain that you get your power supply connected. Luckily, I've got a long lead on this one. So I can go ahead and connect my power supply. And then we're going to take it and just slide it in there. If we've got our brackets affixed properly, it should, it should slide in pretty easily. All right, so now that I've got my unit slid all the way back in, I'm going to go ahead and run my four screws here in the front where I have my pre-drilled holes to secure it in place. All right, so we've got our unit installed. Let's go ahead and work on getting our trim ring around it. All right, guys, the last thing that we have left to do here is to actually install our trim ring around this unit. Now, what, I'm, what I do, we're gonna, I'm going to set it up here. We've actually got holes. There's a hole here that's angled to actually secure this. There's one, we've got a hole, two holes on top. We've got two holes that are down here on the bottom and they go in at an angle into the cabinetry. So we're gonna, just like before, we're gonna pre-drill those so that we don't have to worry about the, the cabinetry, the customer's cabinetry splitting or cracking on us. I'm gonna hold my trim panel in place, grab my drill, then we're gonna grab, there's four black screws that actually come in our kit. We're gonna grab our screws we're going to run them down into those angled channels into our pre-drilled holes. All right, so let's go ahead and let's remove our protective film. Let's test the function of our door opening. Pull off some of this installation material. All right, so I'm going to go ahead, since this is a new install, I'm going to run the microwave for 30 seconds. I just want to verify operation for the consumer before I go ahead and leave it with them. I always put just about a cup of water in it, run it for about 30 seconds, check the water, see if it's hot to the touch. So it is heating. I'm going to go ahead and set these racks that came with it back in here, let my consumer know about removing them unless they're doing any type of multi-tier cooking. I'm going to take my owner's manual and any other literature that I have um, and hand it either to my consumer if this is uh, if they happen to be in the home. If this is brand new construction I'm just going to place it in the drawer to the left of the range. If you guys have any other questions or concerns feel free to check us out at electroluxservicetips.com.